Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Dan's Pro Shop, where everything's made up and the instructions don't matter. That's right. Just like you're supposed to yield when you get onto the highway. Everybody knows that you just hammer down when you merge. That's the way you do it. Well, hey, today we're talking about hydraulic fittings and the myriad that there is. There isn't one specific fitting that you're going to run into in fluid power. There are quite literally hundreds. But we're going to go over some of the most common ones that you would run into. Let's go ahead and take a look at the bench and see what we got going on today. So the first and arguably the most common hydraulic fitting that you would run into is this guy right here called a JIC, male and female. This one is a swivel, but you can have fixed ones also. JIC stands for Joint Industries Council. This is kind of like the hydraulic version of SAE or the Society of Automotive Engineers. It's just an acronym for the the authority behind these fittings that ensures that they're the same every time. Kind of like NEMA is for electricity, JIC is for hydraulics. So if you notice here, there's a 37 degree flare on either end of this fitting that makes a perfect liquid tight joint whenever this is joined together. And this coupling here, it just spins. So that allows you to put this into a valve block or not spin your hose whenever you're joining this together. And this, like I said, is arguably the most common one that you would run into simply because it's probably one of the most reliable hydraulic fittings that you would see. A little better look into this JIC. You can see here in the end of this fitting here that's missing a coupler, this is the inverse of that 37 degree flare that matches the male of this JIC. See how that taper fits together just perfectly? Whenever these are joined together and torqued properly, this seal actually becomes liquid tight and it is a really good fitting for fluid power. Another thing that you would run into on fluid power is just regular straight NPT or national pipe thread. This is something that is arguably good and bad. Pipe thread is tapered so whenever you screw it into the receiving female end, it actually wedges into that fitting and gets tighter the more you wind it in. However, that being said, this creates a spiral leakage path the whole way from the source of the fluid. This is why you have to use some kind of sealant or thread tape on this fitting to ensure that liquid doesn't bypass the threads and end up leaking all over the place. Another super common hydraulic fitting that you might run into in the field is this called an O-ring boss. This is a straight pipe thread or British pipe thread, BSPT, British Standard Pipe Thread. This is not the same as national pipe thread because it doesn't taper. This is a straight thread. So if you were to measure this with a set of calipers from the base to the tip, it is the exact same OD the entire way. And this fitting relies on this O-ring to seat against the receiving fitting to make this a liquid tight fitting. There is a cousin to this fitting called the flat face O-ring where there would be a notch or a groove milled into the face of this with an O-ring inserted into it. And that O-ring would seal into the receiving end and keep the liquid from flowing even into the threads. In another one of the common fittings that you would see out in the field is one of these quick disconnects. This is primarily used in equipment like detachable stuff for bobcats and excavators. This just allows you to install and remove hydraulic equipment easily and without so much leakage. This is similar to the air fittings that you would see on your regular air hose in the shop and your tools. There's a male and a female the female side is usually your source, but these ones, you can have the source on either side because the male isn't normally on like an air fitting. You see with an air fitting, the male side is open all of the time. So if you have this on your hose, it would just leak. And then you usually have this on your tool and this on your hose because the female end is closed. But with the hydraulic fittings, 
both sides are closed, so you can put the source on whichever side you want, and they don't open the valves inside until they're inserted into one another. But one of the downsides about these fittings here is if there is stored energy behind them, you have to relieve that pressure somehow and get this detent pushed down to allow you to put these fittings together. If you guys have ever struggled with this in the field, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you have 2,000 PSI behind this fitting pushing back on this spring, I don't care how strong you are, you're never gonna get this thing put together until you relieve that pressure. I know this was a quick one, but hey, what's wrong with that? And really, we're just going over the absolute basics here. Whenever you run into fluid power, there are a lot of different connection style fittings that you would run into, and these really are the basics. And whenever you get into this kind of stuff, it's important to know that. This isn't like regular plumbing, this is a whole different category. So if you guys are interested in this kind of stuff and learning more about fluid power, go ahead, drop a comment and a thumbs up, let me know. Until next time.